Greetings all, it's David Fuxa here. And I figured after playing Pact of Steel 1, I, I should probably play Pact of Steel 2 just to sort of show off the differences between the two. Um, so here we go. So basically before we start, um, I'm actually going to go into game options here. And as you can see from here, there's uh, the Chinese are back in. So Italians, Russians, Germans, British, Japanese, Americans, and Chinese. Um, in here you can like sort of set all the different things. So one of the things I want to set, we're going to go in here and you can attack with the paratroopers that deepen enemy territory. Um, let's have battleships require repair facilities to actually repair. And I'll well, we'll say that's going to be good enough for now. So, okay. Start local game. And we're going to set the Italians to be medium AI, the Russians to be medium AI, Germans to be medium AI, British medium, Japanese medium, and then the rest are going to be human. So we're going to play both the Chinese and the Americans this time. Part of the reason I'm doing this is to show off the sort of like what the Chinese um, are kind of like in this one, because they, work, they operate a little bit differently than uh, in you know the other um, games when they're um, around, and they're different from the other factions as well. So we'll just do that. And we'll start the game. So it's going to start much like the original one with uh, Italy going first. And then after that, I believe Russia will. And it looks like they're dropping all their guys on Algeria for the moment. Russia makes an attack on West Russia there. That happened last time, of course. And they moved their sub up there to uh, the British area. They're moving their stuff away from the Japanese, and that might seem stupid, but there's a reason for it. Germany's going to take out the cruiser there, the cruiser there. Corellia, they're going to take the caucus. So I was actually thinking about doing that moment, my. Uh, time playing the Germans, but they're going to do it for sure. And they'll do it. They'll obviously lose that right back, but um, that's just being affected. Germany's going to move his forces forward in Africa. And it's all around everywhere else. Britain will make a move. They will attack the Germans up there in the North Atlantic. Get rid of them. Maybe get rid of that giant, uh, uh, Japanese sub. Protect Australia. They're going to try and retreat with those guys. So they place something up there in the North Atlantic. Japanese are going to attack the British there. And they're going to go after me here. This is sort of a bug, I think, by the way, with what the Japanese are doing up in Midway. You'll see why. So, essentially, the Japanese attacked me with one transport in an area with a sub and a transport. So that has zero defensive power. So let's remain. You'll die. They attacked the Chinese and the Chinese got utterly whipped by him. We kill off a couple of guys back. They attacked midway to kill this guy. He doesn't do any damage back. Well, well, I didn't lose midway. All right, so it's the Americans' turn, but we'll just wait for news at the end. Before we start, I'm just going to give you a sort of overview of what's happened. So I no longer have possession of China. That's their own faction now. China's their China, not America. Um, in the Atlantic here, we've got a damaged battleship, a regular battleship for Japanese, a couple of our guys over here, versus 
pretty much this small meager amount of guys over here. So I've got one battleship, a carrier, two fighters, a destroyer, a transport, and a submarine. Um, I'll note that the transport doesn't have any defense or offense value, so it's pretty much like in the big world. He's going to die if he uh, is left out in the open. He needs to be protected before he, um, you know, dies. You'll notice that there's like all these little things on the map now. There's like these little naval things. Over here you'll see um, these like Axis symbols and Russian symbols. So there's actually a lot going on, and I figured before we... Um, uh, I'll just do this, by, um, this first, by the way. There's uh, this in the Atlantic and all that there. Uh, for the objectives, I'm just going to look at these first. So, much like with the big world, there's objectives now. And uh, as you can see, everyone has their objectives. Italy seems to have the same ones. Um, if they control blah, 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 parts of Europe and they uh, don't have any surface ships, then they gain a little purchasing power. If uh, um, Italy gains only once a free burst of a cruiser, if they begin up their third or fourth turn, the Axis control four out of four of Algeria, Libya, Anglo, Egypt, and Transjordan. So, um, if they, you know, by a fair term they have that, then they get a free cruiser. For the Russians, they have um, some nice stuff. We'll uh, skip all that. There's a whole bunch of stuff there. You want to try and obviously prevent them from getting their objectives because it helps them out. But for us, we get we gain two to ten person units starting on turn two. America will begin making plus two income as Americans' wartime economy ramps up. So basically, um, the sleeping giant is waking and is going to get stronger. This will increase by plus two more every two turns, so that. Turn 4 will begin with uh, plus 4, and turn 6 will have plus 10, and so on until plus 10. So, pretty much what's going to happen, I'm going to have um, plus 2 starting on turn 2, and then by, uh, I guess, turn 10, um, I'm basically going to have uh, plus 10 pushing units just from waiting. So, I'm actually going to gain more pushing t um, units over time. I also have these like abilities, uh, these are the same as like um, the British, by the way. If you conquer Western Europe, Sardinia, Sicily, Italy, Greece, free or any of any of those, and they don't have any surface ships in, uh, you know, the zones down here. I it's not really listed, but you know, in the area over there. Basically, you'll prevent them from uh, getting their personal units, and you'll get, actually gain four. Um, you'll also gain four if you control six out of Alaska, East Indies, Borneo, Philippine Islands, UK, Solomon Islands, Caroline Islands, Australia, New Zealand, Okinawa, Wake Island, blah, blah, all the little Pacific Islands you get a bonus from. If Japan has no battleships or carriers at the end of USS turn, you get um, person units. And then there's these little other things. So basically, these are like sort of like little uh, uh, dip, tibbets and gimmicks that you get. So if I manage to capture at any time at the end of Germany's third term, fourth term, or fifth turn, Western Europe, I'll gain paratroopers. If at any time, um, at the end of the third or fourth turn, I control Lasso, Wake Island, Hawaiian Islands, and Midway, I will gain improved shipyards. If at um, the end of the eighth turn and above two conditions are met at the end of Jeremy's turn, uh, basically we'll get war bonds. So, um, yeah, basically if you control that stuff, you'll gain war bonds. And then down here, US fires gain the ability to support infantry stackable with artillery if. Any time the U.S. has two F2 war bonds and jet power technology. So if you have war bonds and jet um, power, you can basically use your um, fighters like artillery if you want. And there's also Chinese down there. We'll look at them for now. Basically, the Chinese will gain the ability to produce extra units if allies control Sinkiang, Central China, India, and may use this money to produce unlimited selection of units. And that includes tanks and fighters. If um, at the starting of their turn, uh, they'll gain the infantry in Sinkiang, so that's their capital. Or was their capital if they control all of that stuff, blah blah. You'll see, um, you'll see how Japan, China works. Basically, uh, they're sort of grillish in this game. They're much more grillish than in the big world, so they're kind of interesting that way, but they're kind of also annoying. Now, that's just the objectives. I just want to go into notes here. And it's it's worth knowing that this is, the purpose of this map is to provide a fun map that shows off all the newest features AAA has to offer. In many ways, Pact of Steel, why I don't like it? It's because it throws in a whole ton and whack of uh, features that aren't necessarily fun. I mean, in many ways, they uh, have like these like, you know, they're interesting features and they could, they could be cool in their own map, but altogether, they're just a, just a big collusion of stuff that you don't really care about. So you have like uh, sea zone convoy centers where if Russia controls them, they'll get income from it. The same with the access, they have uh, a couple for Norway. And I'm being called to one moment. All right, we're back. So I was looking for the notes here. So most of this stuff, um, 
that I'm looking through here, it pertains to like these like uh, zones. So you have like zone C zones five and six are combat routes. They are linked to the land territory of Norway. Um, you know, right, right here. At least one convoy zoot must be controlled by the same power that controls the land territory for the power to gain income from the land territory. So you can't gain income from Norway unless, I guess, um, you control these uh, Norway and one of these neighbor roads, or else there's no income, I guess. Then there's these ones, our blockade zones. Those are ones over here. Each enemy warship in these zones will reduce the income of the touching land territories by one per warship, two per normal submarine. So. Um, if you if I'm like the Americans and I drop like a, a submarine in these places, it'll actually um, help negate the uh, purchasing unit power of the uh, Japanese. Vice versa, if uh, I controlled these and Japan dropped the submarines in these areas, and I would lose uh, the you know purchasing power of those areas. The air transport is an air unit that, especially dropping off units, have um, dropping off units has four units and can carry into battle or drop off friendly territory and a few free units. It's enabling when you get the pair drop troopers. So. Uh, apparently, it's just like you know, like an Airbus type of thing. Uh, but I guess it didn't really exist. But during the uh, after years of World War II, what the Allies did, they dropped off um, supplies and other things in Berlin, Germany, during a time that uh, the Russians started to control East Germany. So the only way that they could drop off stuff in that territory was by air transport. So that's, I guess, what the air transport here is based off of. The supercarrier, that's even more. Uh, later, obviously, that's just a super carrier that, ca that carries both transports, infantry and land units, or other un land units, or uh, transports um, aircraft like a normal um, aircraft carrier. Major submarine that's a specialized Japanese fighter, it's a suicide unit. Kamikaze fighters are also suicide units for the Japanese. Um, you have like these sort of buildings, and we'll go into those when I get to them. There's new technologies, so there's reinforced hulls, uh, defense uh, for subs. Each nation may only purchase factories up to a total of three, so... Um, let's see here. Right now, um, let's say Germany has these free uh, industries right now. They can't purchase a another industry right now, but they can capture more. With, with the English here, they have one in all their territories. They can purchase more industries and like, put them you know, in, in their territories that have two or more purchasing power. So Anglo, Egypt, Union of um, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand. But the thing about them is that uh, they can only purchase up to free industries before they can stop building industries. That's what this um, factory fit note is about. We'll go to politics later. Strategic bombing. Uh, basically, these fighters can help you with the escorting part of like bombing people. Not really too important, but can help. Long range if you do this, and it's all like natural objective notes. Anyhow, so. Before we get started, right now I'm playing the Americans. I want to note that I don't plan to win this game. I just plan to show off like an hour, I guess, of video gameplay with this and like, like just show what the, some of these features are and all that. So I'll note that with the um, purchasing here and with the tech rolls, it's much like World, um, Big World, so I can choose one of the two to purchase for. And then I can get the tokens which roll sub subsequently every turn afterwards. So I can say buy two of this, they cost four per. We got zero hits, but they'll keep rolling until they get hit, and then they'll reset to zero. I have access to all these units. For land, we have the infantry, artillery, armor, and AA guns. So you should know how these all work, but infantry are your basic grunts. Artillery, of course, they are um, a sort of uh, a offensive support unit for the infantry, but they're also powerful on their own. Armor, mechanized infantry, obviously. AA guns, they shoot down defensively any aircraft that enter the territory. For air units, we have the fighter and the bomber, and they can be upgraded to, you know, jet fighter, jet bomber, heavy bomber, and all that. Gotta love your B-17s, you know. For C, and here's like a lot of stuff, we have the transport, which has no defense or offense. The submarine, two uh, offense, one defense, though it can be increased with the uh, corresponding technology I was in the notes there. Destroyer, 222, they can, of course, attack um, offensively submarines or... Pretty much anything that uh, is in the air, unlike the submarine. Cruisers can, uh, you know, there's basically upgrade uh, destroyers here. Carriers, you know, much like before they have a little bit more defense, but they basically carry aircraft. Super carriers over here obviously are even more defensive and more expensive, but they can carry um, infantry if you want them to. And then battleships are then your super units, or, you know, two hit uh, ship that can 
do a lot of damage. And then we have constructions. So you already know about what the factory does, and you're going to play free. You have bunkers, harbors, and airfields. And I think what we want to do is we want to uh, like basically skip this for now. But basically, let's say in later on against the Japanese, I may want to build a harbor in Midway. And the purpose for it will be to repair my battleships so that they can be repaired. So that's the purpose of the harbor. Airfields, they um, would basically let me defend um, Midway from attacks in the sea zones around them if the aircrafts are based in Midway itself. As well, they'll also get increased movement speed. This will work for the harbor too, by the way, ships, though that's not as important, I find. Anyhow, so we have all of this. Um, let's just put them for now. I just want to have a look around here. So I want to note that right now I'm fairly weak. In the Japanese theater, I can probably hold my own against these, you know, attacks over here. But let's, you know, be serious. A battleship and a destroyer, a carrier and a sub and two aircraft are not going to hold off a submarine. Um, two carriers, a cruiser, an uh, undamaged battleship, a damaged battleship, and two fighters. That's a whole lot. So something I may want to do before the Japanese decide to kick my ass is buy more naval units. Um, let's show you off this. So I'll, I have a carrier here. Let's build a, a carrier. And a fighter. I just want to show you what you can do with like purchasing both of these. And uh, let's say we won't do anything else for now. But we'll just buy a carrier and a fighter. And we'll say done. Now, this is something new um, that's you know related to this. But basically, there's like an action and operations menu. Um, what this is is I have like you know if I want to I can send six person units to the United Kingdom at a cost of 10. So if I feel, you know, the United Kingdom could really help or get help by, you know, a little bit more production, I can send a little bit more to help them out. But we'll say no, no thanks for that and skip that. Maybe later on if they um, need a little bit more purchasing power and, you know, that would help them, I will do so. But for now, we won't worry about it. <clears throat> All right, so objectives. For the Americans, it's going to be um, a little bit before I really get any, you know, purchasing power. Right now, I'm just sort of waking up from my slumber because Japan's attacked me. Um, I'm sort of waiting here, as you can see, for, um, you know, attacks on Europe to start. So we're not going to worry about that. Uh, controlling six of Alaska, East and East Borneo, Philippine Islands, New all this stuff. That will take a while, but... I'm already got you know a little bit of it in there. I've got Midway, Hawaiian Island, um, Alaska, Australia, New Zealand. So we've already actually already got um, five of these territories over here. One, two, three, four, because England controls in that counts, and then the Hawaiian Islands. One thing to note is uh, I may want to initially just strike out at the Pacific really early on. Not only to knock out, say, the Japanese fleet over here, but to take one of these like places. If I take one of them, then I'll get a you know, little boost to uh, purchasing power, which will really help. Though right now, can't really attack, so we'll not worry about that. Um, I should probably do this before I forget. So done. We're gonna move these guys here. So first things first, yeah, we're gonna you know try and defend myself so I don't get myself uh, destroyed. In the Pacific, I perhaps want to move the bomber. Actually, what I could do, since uh, transports don't have any defensive value, I could move this guy all the way here, knock out the Italian transports, and then he'll have no transports for you know the time being. Germany and Italy can build transports if they want, but they won't have them initially, so that could help. So I guess we'll do that. Uh, these guys over here. I wouldn't mind them joining. Over there for now. I might use them in the Atlantic Theater sooner than later, but we're not going to worry about just yet. Germany, of course, has its fighter, and so does Italy, and they could always harass me if they want to. Eventually, they'll also have uh, ships if uh, you wait long enough. Eventually, you know, Germany will run out of territories to expand to, and then they, um, you know, they basically push on to, uh, you know, attack the Britain. 
And at that point, um, you'll see lots of different ships. Or it'll uh, go build ships in Africa, and they'll push them out eventually. Uh, we're going to move one guy up here. We'll make him go to Alaska. And, and I'll send up for you guys. Why not? I'll leave the tanks. Why not? We'll leave them in Central United States because they can go either way. The artillery here. We'll send them that way as well because I'll, I'll probably want to use the artillery over here sooner than later. Alright, I have a feeling that it probably would be wise to get my fighter up here. So let's move that to United Kingdom to fighter. He will take a lot longer to get over there, but. Yeah, I'm not. We'll send this fighter over that way. Or no, we actually won't do that. He'll, we'll put him on a carrier since uh, I've only bought one fighter for the carrier, not two. For my purchasing menu. So we'll just do that for now. I'm obviously not going to do any combat this turn around. I don't have any, you know. I have this guy. That's pretty much it. So, yes. We'll just get rid of those. I'll move him back to the eastern United States. And that will be my turn for moving stuff. Now, you will probably not notice this you know, in any of our game just yet, but here's something you can do. You can actually have it so you can purchase both the carrier and the fighter on the same C zone here. And you can only do this if um, you're building them at once. Um, I don't think you can actually build fighters on existing carriers unless you know, you're building them with the carriers themselves. But anyhow, that's a little bit more defensive power right there. Three fighters, two carriers. Um, the Japanese probably can't beat that, hopefully. And if they can, then I'm in, in big trouble. So, that'll be it for now. I'm only going to get a little bit of uh, Persian power for now, but we'll get more as, you know, as it progresses. Time for China's turn. So, here's China. And they're kind of interesting on in how they work. They basically don't have any... Um, uh, industries or anything. They're just like a sort of guerrilla faction in this um, version of the game. They can't move outside of Russia, so they're stuck in China. And as you can see from here, the Japanese are pushing in. So what we're going to do is we're going to push these guys here. And say I'll be my cop move, and I'll say done. Now, I basically can place um, units with China. So let's go to objectives here. So at the, you know, I gained one infantry at the beginning of my turn. So Sinkang will get this infantry that I can move around or not, I can't move it around initially, but Sinkang will get an infantry that will be in there at every single turn I start with. And if I control two territories or more, like multiples of two, I can place an infantry in one of my territories. And as long as I have less than four units in one of these territories, I can place it. So it's kind of interesting. So there we go. I placed my unit. And it's interesting, Italy has jumped out of its uh, Mediterranean zone there. And Russia's going to fight back. Oh, it's going to hit Ukraine. Nice. Double hit. That was sort of what I was afraid of when I, you know, was playing initially with um, uh, Germany. I was afraid that Russia would come in and do a lot of damage like that. Honestly, Russia's going to fight back. But, I mean, if uh, Russia wanted to, they could just crush Ukraine with uh, their tanks, their infantry, artillery, and all that other stuff. What are you going to do, UK? Oh, he's going to kill a transport. And he's going to take Norway. So, you'll notice that he controls on the um, map over there, the sea road between England and Norway. And because he controls that, 
Um, he'll get purchasing power, I guess, units from Norway as a result. All right, there's those units from Australia and Brazil now. And he built some super carriers. All right, so here's politics in action. What does this mean is Japan has declared war on us? What happened is, um, for the first five or six turns, I can't remember which, uh, Russia and Japan are not at war. They're actually neutral toward each other. But, um, you know, with a dice roll, Japan will actually declare war on Russia, and then you'll get the basic, you know, Axis and allies, Japan jumping on top of Russia. So they've declared war on Russia. Of course, I'm not exactly too worried about them losing territories at the moment. Okay, he built a um, a producing industry on East Indies there. He built that there in East Indies, so that's like, you know, now two of his, like, industries. He can build one more if he wants to, and he might, but for now he'll only have it there. Alright, if I want to, I could, like, you know, go have another token. Let's maybe build one more token. Another miss, so well. Um, I think what we want to do is we want to build a battleship this time, and... A cruiser and a sub. So, some good, you know, little defensive power from my Pacific fleet. So, done. I could send aid if I had it, but I don't. It, you need those 10 person units, by the way, to be able to send aid. And if you don't have it, you just can't. So, yes. That's going to get annoying, by the way, having to cancel the um, objectives every time. You can always get that, you know, give uh, UK 10 person units for six. And you have to cancel it every single time. Um, they basically have their fleet there. That'll help them out, and maybe, as you can see, they'll start sending guys this way. I want to help them eventually take out the um the European theater, but the Japanese are over here for now. He's got four fighters there now, so we'll hold off on going after him. Get these guys here. So I've got two carriers, four fighters, a battleship, a sub, and two destroyers. Versus his uh, damaged battleship, fully uh, healed battleship, cruiser, two carriers, and four fighters. If I build those like Pacific stuff, I can probably take them out, and then maybe we can start you know, having fun in the Pacific area a little bit. Though I have to watch out for these guys, obviously. He's still building up stuff. Even though they're slow at building stuff, it doesn't mean that they can't, and they will keep building stuff. Uh, let's see here. I could drop my guys on the Hawaiian Islands. The bomber. But that doesn't seem like a good idea. I've also got these guys over here now to worry about. Hmm. I'll probably go after those guys eventually, but for now we'll hold off. There's a few ships out there in the wind, so to speak. And because the UK has actually guys in Russia, and I'll note this for Russia, they, um, one of their things here. If uh, they control Archangel, and if no Allied forces are in Soviet territories, they'll actually gain four Persian units. Because the UK has their units in Russia's territory, they um, won't be really benefiting from that little objective. So it won't really hurt them to, say, have a little bit of uh, defense if I want to do that. And I might do that. We'll send them over here to Russia. The fighter. I'll leave that guy in the eastern United States for now. We'll worry about that fleet in a bit. But, um... Move you guys there. Move you here. And we'll leave those tanks there for now. And I think what we're going to do then is just press done and done. I'll place all these guys, the battleship, the cruiser, and the submarine in my territory there. So now I have a very cum cumbersome force. I could probably take out this, uh, the bomb stuff down here, though not this guys. So done. And war phase, American national objective. So I'm going to get two pursuing units because it's the second turn. 
And that, you know, that's from the uh, war bond type of, you know, juggernaut type of idea. All right, here's um, sort of like the production phase of the Chinese. On the second turn, they can produce stuff if they have uh, access to India. Um, they can produce um, tanks and fighters, but we can't do that just yet. We'll just press uh, artillery for now. I'll play done. So if I actually go in here. So China gains, or let's see here. They have the ability to purchase units if they control Sikang, Central China, just from right here. India, so if they control these free, free uh, countries, one, two, three, they can produce tanks and they can produce um, fighters. Because I can't um, sort of, you know, control this at the moment, I can't produce the tanks and the fighters, but I can produce the artillery, which is going to be good enough for now. That's quite a, you know, a little bit of defensive barrier to try and go through those guys right there, so we don't worry too much about trying that right now. So we'll say, done. Done. And we'll build these guys here. And I can't place them because I don't have any place where to place them, so we're done. So I have to wait until... Um, I'm not sure if we can place those next turn or not, but we can't do anything for a moment. Oh, they're going to attack Belarus. Or Belarusus. Not sure how you pronounce that one. He's going to attack West Russia. Lots and lots of stuff. Lots of tanks going there. Looks like the um, UK is going to try and hit that sub, though it'll fail, by the way. I'll, you'll see why in a bit. Nice territories. So UK tried to attack that sub, they failed, you'll see why. Or I'll tell you why in a moment, you won't see why. Okay, so I got back a couple of Chinese territories because of uh, England there, that's cool. That transport's dead, by the way. Oh, looks like the United Kingdom has upgraded radar. That's very nice. And they're gonna go on the attack. Nice, so we're gonna retain one of these territories and kill this artillery here. And we kill a fighter. Well, we kill a fighter in the artillery. Cool. Cool. Those are actually fairly good wins. Jap Japan, you know, the Japanese forces getting killed is really good. Hey, shipyards, cool. That'll mean reduce ship production, even though I already built all my ships. All right. Um. So yeah, over here in the uh, South Atlantic, the submarine still exists. You need to send destroyers to kill submarines or else they don't die. So that's one of the rules in this game. You know, much like in Big World. They can send their fighters down to try and kill it, but it won't work. Um, free fighters, all these guys. I can probably, if I want to, go for it with all these guys to kill them. Um, I'm going to buy fighters. At least three of them, I guess. And... Actually, let's buy two, and I'll build a, a bomber. And a transport. Now nah, we're going to change that up a little bit. Um, we're going to take off the transport, take off the bomber, fighter, and destroyer. That's well build. Done. No action. All right, so combat move. 
So, we're starting to get to the point where I can actually do combat. You know, they're slow to fight, but they eventually just start kicking ass, and now it's time to kick ass. Um, this guy, I sort of said here, he says I'm here to sort of defend against the encroaching Germans. I'll leave him in Russia for now, just because I'm kind of concerned about the Germans sort of taking Russia right now. If they take Russia early on, it'll really cripple us. Over here. What do I want to do? Okay, they're on Solomon Island right now. So you know what? We're going to do this. We're going to send... The tanks. And... They can't move unless they're actually there. That's... Good to know for our future reference. Okay, we'll drop um, artillery. That guy there. And since I can't really move the other guys, we'll have to. Uh... Right, I forgot about something. Let's just send two guys. No, we'll send uh, all three. Load those guys into transport. We're going to move everyone to here. Load this guy into transport. So, you know, uh, two infantry in one of the transports, an infantry in, our, um, in artillery in our transport, and then the other two infantry to our transport. We'll send all these guys right there. And we'll drop them in Solemn Island if we win. Now clobber them for sure. And this bomber, you are too far away. Bomber cannot reach. Oh well. And interestingly enough, it looks like the UK flees up here in the Mediterranean. So I'll actually be cutting off the um, Italian purchasing units right there. Oh, well, we'll leave this guy in Eastern USA for a moment. That's going to be our turn, just attacking the uh, Germans out there, I think. Or not the Germans, the Japanese. These are Japanese. So done. So C zone is going to go first. We're going to remain. All right, we damaged their other battleship with one of the sub-hits. That's cool. We killed off almost everything except for the carrier and two of their battleships. The, uh, you know, they took a couple of hits on me. That's my battleships taking the hits. All right, we're going to take three more hits. Here's where we're going to lose our, um, our subs. I actually want to sort of retain the characters, so, or carriers, because they can be helpful, but we'll lose the subs and the destroyers because they're like, easy to, you know, replace. So we're in main. I killed off almost everything. One guy survived. Um, we'll lose the destroyer and we're going to lose a fighter because, you know, I expect I lose one of these. And we're main and he's dead and our fighter's dead. So that basically killed off their, you know, outer Pacific fleet. They still have these guys over here, the two battleships, the submarine, the major submarine, two destroyers. We won't worry about that just yet. So we take Solomon Islands. And there's that objective. If, if you control six of the 13, then we get four extra personal units, so there we go, we got six more, or four more rather, for having a six. And because Japan has no battleships or carriers at the end of US's turn, I guess those are cruisers, not battleships, I don't know why, they're not registering, but whatever. Then Japan will, uh, or the US will basically get another four personal units, so there we go, no personal units. Oh wait, here it is, or no carriers, so he has no carriers, J Japanese there. Interesting. Um, so that's great. That's done. We'll say, uh, non-combat move. I want to move these, uh, tanks, obviously. Let's move them here. They can be used over there when I get to it. 
So done. Um, I want to place two of these guys here. And... I think what I want to do... I was going to place the, you know, destroyer over here. Deal with him. And I guess we'll still do that. But I'm only going to place the fighter here, over here. I built three fighters, I only need two to replace the ones I lost. So this guy can help kill a sub if he wants, I guess. So done. And War Phase 1, I now get uh, two person units because it's round 3 and I'll get another 4 next turn. The Pacific, so I have nat at National Objective, we get another 4 person units, so we're up to 48. And Chinese, they get to go. Um, you're going to send all your units to Central China. And you'll notice I didn't get the chance to purchase units there. Uh, you have to control these at the start of your, or, you know, start of your turn to get the next turn. So now you have that. So done. And I had this from last turn too. So we can, if I want to, let's just put them all here. Or I can always put the infantry there, interestingly enough. That's fine. Just those guys there. You guys go here. So now we have, you know, a bit more guys. You're able to build them there. There goes the super carrier that the United Kingdom had up there, but oh well. And Russia's going to attack West Russia. They do bets. They're going to try and defend themselves from the encroaching tanks there. I'll probably crush them in West Russia. Germany definitely, definitely has a lot of units, as you can see. So is Italy, for that matter. They're going to kill that Italy fighter. That's cool of uh, United Kingdom. Move that guy to India. Japan's going to attack my infantry there. I expect they might. That's fine, though, I mean. Uh, the Japanese only have so much to uh, send at this point. I should note, by the way, that they actually sent an infantry over without transport there. The Japanese have a special ability, and I'll get to it in a moment. And we'll just look at that in a bit. So, Japan. I just want to point this out. So one of the abilities that Japan has, Japan's destroyers gain the ability to transport a single infantry if on the third or fourth turn the Axis do not control any of Sikang, Indian, or Beria SSSR. Oh. I guess they didn't. But basically they have the ability they want to, to use their destroyers here, to transport infantry onto these, like, you know, places with this, you know, this destroyer, like a transport would. I have to watch out for that if they, you know, get to it, though it doesn't look like they should. Yeah, they shouldn't have that just yet. Alright, well anyways, let's go to production here. So he's got transport now over there, a few transports up there. Those are cool and all. Um, I actually want to buy some stuff in the Atlantic here now, so we'll buy this battleship. Uh, we'll buy this guy and this guy in the other theater. Yeah, we'll buy those guys for now. Bunch more ships. All 
All right, so combat move. It's about time I start kicking ass. So he's got a sub already there. This is probably going to be jinxing it, but let's send this destroyer to try and kill a sub. And over here, I'm actually thinking about doing something really cheesy. We're actually going to send these guys. over here and we're just going to drop him and the east needs to take that out from the Japanese's, you know, thumb, so to speak. Going to lose those. These guys, which I produced before, they're going to try and fly down there. I'm tempted to try and kill these guys here, but I'm not sure these guys here would be able to win the fight, so what we're going to do is we're just going to bomb, I think, this guy here, maybe go to that guy there, just kill that one submarine, just get him out of the picture. We'll leave these, leave these guys sort of on Russia there, these fighters for now. So done. Yep. Yep. So there goes that sub. I'll move these guys there. And obviously there, since I can't move them anywhere else. Hopefully these guys here don't get killed by those... Uh, I cruise and get to show by those battleship and that guy. That's a fairly good move. Move guys that, those guys back. So yeah, that'll be my move for, you know, initially. Done. And I'll just place these guys right there. And we'll start running these guys off the board, hopefully, in a moment. So, now we get four... Um, Four from the war phase, so, you know, four from that. I get four from Pacific and four from just having, you know, sunk the Japanese capital ships. All right, so here's what it is to purchase tanks now. The Chinese own these two right here and that, so they can purchase a tank if they want. We'll wait for purchasing the tank, so done. And I basically just want to send... Everyone here... Right there. You guys this way. I'll place this guy here. Oh, we can place them both there. Cool. So now we got, you know, a nice little attack force to start pushing back to Japanese a little bit from the other territories I've got. We capture all of China if possible. I figured that might happen. Oh, those bastards. The, the Russians actually got to keep their uh, sub because it was their battle, so to speak. But whatever. Alright, looks like the Germans got pushed back a little bit there. I'm actually a bit concerned that the Germans are about to push back into uh, the caucus there, though. That's a lot to uh, overcome. Eight tanks, 11 tanks, 10 infantry. A lot of German units that the Russians have to worry about there. Nope, looks like the uh, British are going to take out them. They're going to take out that transport. And that carrier is going to die soon because, you know, can't leave that open in the open. Nope, we're going to attack the Soviet Far East. 